hey there this is our third video in the series of superbase and in this video we'll be exploring the storage section of superbase so lastly we saw the authentication and the basically setting up the policies so make sure that you have uh, gone through the previous videos in order to uh, get a proper uh, starting so let us get started with the storage and before that i would uh, like to also mention the docs here as well right so in the docs it mentions that uh, we can create a bucket right so we can create a bucket using the code as well or we can simply create it using the uh, user interface here so i'll be using the user interface here so you can create a new bucket and name it anything so i will name it images here okay and you can uh, make it public and if you want anyone to access it but we would uh, not be doing that we would be setting custom policy policies here right so let's save and it will create a bucket so the bucket is created and now let's see how to configure it with uh, flutter right so as you can see to get uh, let's say let to upload a file we have to use superbase.storage right so in the last two tutorials also i mentioned that the superbase uh, instance that they are using is superbase.instance.client so that is what that superbase means in case you are guessing that right so to upload a file you use that instance and it has a storage variable and then from and then you mention the name so we named it images and let's say they are using avatars here right and i will zoom in for you as well right so they are using the let's go to insert back uh, upload a file right so they're using avatars name so here we are supposed to name the bucket okay so then we're using the upload and the name along with the file name and other options so that is the basic syntax in order to access the storage in uh, superbase right so i'll show you an example right here let's see so my project is up and running and in the last instances we created this uh, login and sign up so let's run this um, basically what i want is that uh, only if a user is signed in or logged in only then he can access the images and uh, update or insert any images okay so that is why i'm logging in here if you want anyone to access you can use the public setting that i mentioned earlier right so we have done the database one so basically we are able to add the data now and in this video we'll be working on the storage part right so basically let's go to the storage page right in the storage page so here we are having a storage page so in the user interface we are simply showing two buttons right and in up the sec in the upload file button we are using file picker so if you are following along you can uh, simply add the file picker to your pubspec yaml right and uh, you should be good to go so basically using file picker you will be picking an image or any file for instance and you can basically upload it to the super base storage right so let's see what is the logic behind implementing the uh, let's say uploading file right and here down we have the interface to load the images right and we are using u int at least to basically uh, render it to the display okay so let's see how we are adding the image right so in the add image we can see that we are using client.storage similar to what was present in the docs right let me hide this so similar to superbase.storage i have named it client so i am using client.storage right and then i have named my bucket name images so images and then upload and then i am naming the base file base file function basically returns the name of the file right and then i am passing the file itself okay and then uh, it simply uploads the file and uh, basically returns it returns a url but uh, it does not return url basically it returns the name but uh, we are basically not using it we are using another function to get all the files right so this get all files function for, uh, uses similar to the uh, database it also uses from function right and uh, here a new function is available list so it returns all the 
items available in the bucket right so we basically created a bucket and currently it is empty right so this image is bucket is empty currently right and then we simply uh, render over those and simply return the names right so uh, this check that i have additionally added here so the issue is that whenever uh, we have an empty bucket so basically it returns a empty folder placeholder name uh, file so basically we are supposed to omit that so that is why i have added this condition right here okay so this is the logic behind getting the files and adding the files and for downloading the file we can basically use uh, the similar from and then they provide a download function so you can find all these functions available in the uh, documentation itself so you can see that uh, you can create a signed URL, retrieve public URL as well. You can uh, delete a bucket, download a file. This is the one that I'm using. And there are various other functions, but uh, majorly you will be uh, using the get all and download file, uh, download a file, okay? And if you're using public, public, uh, so this would also be useful in case you're using public uh, bucket, right? So for public bucket, you will be using the retrieve public URL. In other cases, you can create a signed URL or basically download the file if you are authenticated or if uh, your policies match, right? So let's see. So we have built this and we have uh, integrated it with the interface as well, right? So let's see. Get all files returns nothing right now because it is empty, right? So I've added these four images. Let's say I want to add this. And let's open the terminal as well. So we can see that we got an error here, right? So it says uh, again the row error. So basically it is quite clear that it is some issue with the policy, right? So let's go to the panel and we can see that under storage we have policies, right? Uh, for database we had the policies under authentication, right? Under authentication we had the policy setting for our database. But for storage we have it under the storage panel itself. And you can go to the policies and you can see that we have policies here, right? So we will be needing to create policies for each of them. So firstly let's create for our bucket and we will be using the template just like before and similar to last time we will be using authenticated users only okay. So let's do that and let's give every access to authenticated user. We can modify it to um, give it to particular users but currently we are giving it to every user. So we want to give it to authenticated user okay. So authenticated and that looks good so that is it and let's review it and save it right so now we'll be creating for storage dot objects right because we will be accessing those as well so uh, similarly authenticated users and go with use this template all and similar to the last time also write a true here okay so this is for storage dot objects and we'll review this and we'll basically save this as well. So we have created policies for these two. Now let's create for storage dot buckets. And similarly, we are going to create for this as well for authenticated users only. So all and basically true here. So if you're wondering why we are uh, returning true, you can watch the previous session in which we covered why we are returning true here, okay? So we can review this and we're good to go. So now we have the policy set up for all our bucket and the image uh, bucket itself. So we should be good to go now. So let's try to upload now. So let's reload this application and uh, we'll be landing the login page again. So uh, one thing I would like to mention is that if you don't log in, it won't be working. So if you want, I can show you in the main instead of login, I can directly uh, navigate to storage page for you. So let's go to storage page right here and let's hot load it. So we are directly onto this page and let's say get all files that works. Let's upload a file and we are currently able to upload because uh, the Superbase maintains sessions, right? So basically knows that we have logged in. But if we would have not been logged in, it would give issue, okay? But right now it is working, so that's good. So you can basically upload any file. So let's say you want to upload this file. And you can see that it returns the path, right? So when, let's go back to the service and we are printing the response. So it basically returns the path. So it is an images slash admin pages.png. 
I will uh, reload the page and you can see that the image has been added right let's upload another file let's say this one right and you can see that it has been added so we can reload the page again and yeah you can see the image right here and let's add the last one as well right so this is the fourth image that I'd like to add and it is shuffling because basically uh, it is getting them alphabetically right so we should have been changing it to the date but uh, currently this is fine right so we can uh, basically add more images and all but that is it about the storage right so let me uh, elaborate on it quite right uh, so let's say so basically let's go back to the storage page and let's see how we are uh, adding the file so basically uh, what we're doing is that we pick a file so the file picker returns us a path and we simply return the a new file from the path and add it to the storage right and in the storage you basically mention the file itself and it will handle the work for us other than that in the download file we are basically using you can see that we're using download file and in the download file we return a uint8 list and basically we are using the uint8 list to basically display the image itself we are not converting it or saving it but we are using image.memory to directly display it to the user right so these are the uh, three major functions that you will be using the upload download and the list all uh, get all functions get all files right uh, list and upload and download right so you can also check other functions available in the uh, documentation itself so uh, you can create a bucket from the data uh, the code itself i have created from the interface but you can create from the code also right you can retrieve a bucket uh, basically this will return all this uh, information about the bucket list all buckets this will return all the buckets and their information update a bucket you can uh, basically change name and all and the properties like here here it has set the public to false we can set it to true so that anyone can access it right and here also you can see that uh, permissions are mentioned right we set up the permissions just a moment ago for the police uh, for the objects and buckets so here also it mentions that which type of permissions are needed in order to uh, delete a bucket or let's say update a bucket okay so we selected all so we are uh, quite good here and then we can empty a bucket upload a file download a file list all files in a bucket this one we are using replace an existing file and so on and so forth you can check out these and that is it about the storage in superbase so i hope that uh, the tutorial was very clear and the code base will also be attached down in the description so uh, let me know if you have any queries lastly i would also like to mention that uh, superbase is hosting an hackathon so basically i want you to participate in this so amazing people with an uh, amazing gifts are available here so basically it is ending on may 21st and it has already started uh, no registration is needed particularly because uh, a submission link is provided and you are supposed to fill it before 12th may right so you can basically submit project here currently no one has submitted so that's good and it's never too late and make sure you participate and explore more about superbase right so that's it for this video and hope you liked it see you in the next one peace mm -hmm.